Yo, what is going on everyone? It is Toffee Trident here, back again with another COD Mobile video. And today's video, we're going over the season eight buffs and nerfs, the balance changes that came with the new season. Now, if you've seen the patch notes, some of the stuff there is wrong, actually. After some testing, I found that some stuff did not get buffed, some stuff did not get nerfed, and I actually found some secret buffs and nerfs that are not listed on the patch notes. So stick around for that. Subscribe for new. We're so close to 20,000. We might be at 20,000 by the time I post this. I'll have a special video coming out in a few days for that. So thank you. Stay tuned for that video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, usually when I make these types of videos, I list the nerfs first and the buffs second, just so it's easier to understand. But in this video, since a lot of things got both buffed and nerfed, I'm just going to be listing them by weapon category. So we're going to start off with assault rifles. In the patch notes, it says that assault rifles got overall adjustments for decreased damage at range and damage to the arms. But when I tested every single assault rifle, I found that nothing has changed. For example, here are the damages that the DRH dealt per shot in its first kill range in Season 7 and Season 8. And here's the same thing for the automatic firing AS Val. In fact, the only thing that was adjusted when it comes to assault rifles are two tap assault rifles that I'll go over in just a second. I just wanted to point out how categorically wrong COD Mobile was when they pointed this out. It's really confusing when it's written in the patch notes and this season is just as confusing as every other season. And once again, this is a true example of don't believe everything you see, even if it's written by Activision. Moving on over to the semi-automatic two tap assault rifles that were adjusted, we first have the AS Val with the 15 round FMJ mag that converts it into a marksman rifle. First of all, its range and its damage at range got adjusted. And when I say adjusted, I don't mean it got exclusively buffed or exclusively nerfed. It got reworked where some things were buffed and some things were nerfed. Generally, the AS Val with this attachment is going to be better at close range. With its first kill range, meaning the range where the damage is at the highest before there's any range drop off, got buffed from 0 to 15 meters to 0 to 25 meters and actually the damage got buffed in that kill range as well from 46 damage per shot in the stomach to 48 damage per shot in the stomach but beyond that this attachment is going to be nerfed so the mid range it actually drops off pretty fast after 25 meters it used to be up to 50 meters now it's up to 38 meters and beyond that the damage got nerfed as well so the takeaway here is the AS valve with this attachment is going to be better at close range but worse at mid and long ranges because this is better at close range they had to nerf the vertical recoil slightly making the vertical recoil harder to control very slightly they also nerfed the hit flinch so you're going to have increased hit flinch when you're shot using this weapon and in the patch notes it also says that they slightly increased the firing animation which i think is a very minor visual nerf for screen shake that i don't really notice now at this point you may be wondering trident that's a lot of stats but does it make it better than the CR-56 amax with m67 ammunition since that was the season 7 meta of two taps and for that question, I would say yes and no. Starting off, yes, it will be better than the CR-56 AMAX with M67 ammo, just because it's gonna have better potential to get a two tap. This means you'll have more range to get a two shot kill than the CR-56 AMAX with M67 ammo, but it's gonna have two huge downsides. Number one, like I just said, it's gonna have more recoil and more hit flinch. And number two, you're gonna have more hit boxes. So the AS Val with the 15 round FMJ ammo, is going to be a two shot kill anywhere on the body in the first kill range except the legs and the upper arms whereas the CR-56 AMAX with the M67 ammo is going to be a two shot kill anywhere on the body except the legs and only the legs and actually hidden inside of that stat is a secret buff so the CR-56 AMAX with the M67 ammunition got a secret buff for the groin multiplier Last season, it was not a two-shot kill in the first kill range in the groin. Now it is, so now it's literally only the legs and below, making this, in my opinion, more consistent and better than the AS Val with the FMJ attachment. We are finally done with ARs, now we can move on to snipers and marksman rifles. So the patch notes listed that these two categories got an adjustment in the one-shot kill range, although I tested this and that's totally not true. One-shot kill snipers like the Locust and the DLQ still are a one-shot kill generally in the upper body and above, and two-shot kill snipers like the M21 and the XPR are still one-shot kills to the head at any range. Nothing has changed. These two categories did, however, get a buff for decreased hit flinch, and I'll actually show you a comparison from Season 7 and Season 8 for every single sniper with and without toughness. First of all, the DLQ-33 and the DLQ with toughness. Next, here's the Locust, 
and the Locust with Toughness. We also have the Arctic 50 and the Arctic with Toughness. Here's the Rytec AMR and the Rytec with Toughness. Next up we have the Outlaw and the Outlaw with Toughness. The infamous NA45 and the NA45 with Toughness. The M21 EBR and the M21 with Toughness. The XPR50 and the XPR with Toughness. Next up the SKS and the SKS with Toughness. The SPR, the SPR with Toughness. The Kilo and the Kilo with Toughness. And finally the MK2 and the MK2 with Toughness. Three of these snipers and marksman rifles also got additional buffs and nerfs. The first one being the SKS, which got increased damage to the forearms from 48 damage per shot to 54 damage per shot, making it a two-shot kill in the forearms, but still a three-shot kill in the upper arms, meaning you're gonna have to aim to the chest and the forearms and try to avoid the upper arms in order to maintain that two-shot kill, which is hard to do. So again, for consistent time to kill, use the M67 ammo on the AMAX. The SKS also got a buff for slightly decreased vertical recoil, slightly decreased bullet spread, decreased hit flinch on top of the already decreased hit flinch, and decreased to the range of motion during animation, which is, like I said, the dynamic shaking of the screen, not really noticeable. What this all adds up to is the SKS is gonna be a weapon for long range. The M21 EBR also got a buff for increased range. For its first kill range, got increased to 65 meters from 62 meters. It got increased damage from 0 to 65 meters. It's going to deal 91 damage per shot and 71 damage per shot 66 meters and beyond. This does not change the time to kill if they're at full health, but if they're just a little bit low on health, you can basically get a one-shot kill anywhere on the body just if they're a little bit low on health, which is pretty cool. The damage buff does not make the M21 usable at all. If anything, it would be maybe the buff for decreased vertical recoil or decreased hit flinch on top of the already decreased hit flinch, or maybe because now it has the ability to two shot through walls. No, the M21 is not in the meta, not even close, maybe for battle royale, but not in multiplayer. And lastly, the XPR got a nerf for decreased damage at range, the first kill range used to be 62 meters, now it's 0 to 50 meters, which is something that the XPR did not need. It was not broken, I don't know why they nerfed it, there's so many other things that they can nerf, like the Holger, which by the way did not get nerfed. Like, come on, why is the XPR getting nerfed? The XPR did however get a buff for decreased vertical recoil and a buff for decreased hit flinch on top of the already decreased hit flinch. Finally, moving on over to some exciting buffs, the PDW57 got a buff for increased damage multiplier to the head, so now it's going to be dealing 32 damage per shot in its first kill range instead of 29 in Season 7. It also got a buff for increased damage multiplier to the chest, so now it deals 29 damage to the chest before it dealt 27. Now, the developer noted that this would bring the PDW up to speed with the current meta, but that's not the case at all. The only thing that this buff brings is now the PDW is going to be a four shot kill with three leg shots and one chest shot, which is pretty specific. You know, the time to kill won't generally change that much. Next up, the HG40 also got buffed. The first one being for damage to the arms, making it 28 damage per shot instead of 26. And it also got a buff for increased damage to the legs, making it a 24 damage per shot instead of 23. And like I said, this does not change the overall time to kill too fast. This just increases a very specific time to kill, being that you can now get a four shot kill with three leg or arm shots and one upper body shot, which is something that would take five shots in the previous update. Being that we're finally done with weapons changes, we can go over some other changes. So first of all, the lightweight perk got nerfed from an increase of 10% to your movement speed to only an increase of 5%. So maybe it's time to start swapping it out. I know in the previous update, I used it on every single class I had, but maybe start using Skulker. It's a really good perk for SD in combination with Dead Silence. You can also maybe use Flak Jacket if you're an objective player, but the lightweight nerf is pretty hefty, I won't lie. Now this one you might be a little bit mad at, but Molotovs and Thermites got buffed. 
but it's only for movement speed and it's really to compensate for lightweight being nerfed. So when you're running to an objective, when you're running off spawn, you switch your lethal to increase movement speed. That's why they're increasing the movement speed just because lightweight got nerfed. This is something you can swap to and, and run. Luckily, it's not a damage increase. <laughs> so nothing too OP there. Slide distance was also adjusted, so now it's in accordance with your movement speed. So the higher your movement speed, the farther you slide. And that really comes down to heavier weapons like snipers and LMGs have slower slide distances. The last minor adjustment I'll be talking about in this video are score streaks. So the cluster strike, EMP systems, napalm, and Hawk X3 now give you increased points for getting kills or destroying equipment. All right, you made it in the video. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like. This video took a while to make to research all the stuff, compare stats from season seven and season eight. So just would mean a lot. Also, thank you again for 20,000 subscribers and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.